Whoa. Alright. Um, in case you're wondering why, um, uh, why, um, uh, why, why is this thing vertical again? Well, because it's, it's the anniversary edition of the Anime Reviews Digest. Welcome, alright? So, we're gonna start our celebration of this, uh, of this Digest's first anniversary by, well, simple, paying tribute to, to the very first one. Um, uh, if, in case, uh, in case you're not familiar with how, how the ARD started, it started with this, vertical, no, uh, no key visuals, and what, well, I wasn't into lab mics then, right? So, link to that, uh, link to ARD number one in the description below. So, check it out. Now, on to business. Bottom line, uh, Yoshida has proven himself to, uh, to, well, to be of good intentions with Sayu. Pinatunayan niya ito sa kuya niya, si Isa. And well, Isa came in, gave, uh, gave Sayu a week more to think about. I gave a week, gave her a week more to think. And then, well, Sayu took this time in um, telling, uh, uh, probably t telling the two closest people, the two people closest to her, si Yoshita, tsaka yung, I forgot the, that blondie's name. I forgot that blonde girl's name na best friend, yung uh, workmate niya na best friend niya. So, she told both of them her, her entire backstory uh, from from her days in Hokkaido up to the point where she met Yoshida. And uh, I don't want to go into the details because I want you guys to watch this episode because Sayu's got a really sad backstory to tell. Alright? What's that? It's concerned... Uh, well, I'm going to give you a clue. It's... Um, it's more about bullying in school, all right? And well, um, the blonde girl thought na hindi ganon kaseryoso, but after after hearing Sayu's backstory, yep, serious to. So yun na napusob sila ni well, final scene, okay? Final scene, it led to uh, her asking Yoshida anong, anong gusto niyang gawin for Sayu. And before that, uh, Yoshida was telling her na it's not my place. Uh, I'm just it's not my place to, to tell her what to do. So, tinanong kumbaga ni hindi um, parang ni rephrase ng blonde girl yung question niya. So, what you're going to do about her? Ina, napa isip si Yoshida, right? Overall, it's a really good episode. Bakit? Well, base muna. It's not the typical slowness for uh, for a uh, for a romance anime because not only is Sayu telling her backstory, but um, the episode itself dealt with a very serious social issue. Okay. Bullying. Now, bullying is common in school, right? Even here in the Philippines, well, um, teenagers experience bullying. Right? So, medyo, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're a teenager living in the Philippines and you're watching Higihiro, and you're being bullied in school, makakarihin, makakarihin, Anniversary hiccups. Mahakarilik ka sa episode na to. Right? So, the, slow, the slowness is... Um, it's just right to make the viewer feel that this is a real social issue. It's not just in anime. It doesn't just exist in anime but also in real life. Yeah. Tama yung uh, good call by Project Number 9 to to pace this one a little bit slower. 
para maintindihan ang lahat na totoo ang bullying. Flow naman. Oh, first gearship there was uh, was when Isa uh, told Sayo that he's going to give her uh, a week to think. Uh, and he also told her na ako nang bahala kay uh, ako nang bahala kay Ermat. Yeah, parang ganoon niya, parang ganoon sinabi niya, right? I'll um, I'll handle mom, right? You got a week. You got a week. You got a week more to think. Okay, so, pinabayan. Well, say well, he's um, kampanti siya kay Yoshida. Okay. Well, it's uh, Yoshida is a rarity these days. All right. That guy's a real gentleman. That guy's a real. That guy's a gentleman in every sense of the word. Right. Makakarilita ko. Okay. Nakakarilita ko actually sa character ni Yoshida. So, uh, that's the first gear shift. Now, second gear shift is when uh, probably it was during the backstory. Okay? But I know what I don't want to tell you guys because I really want you guys to, to, to watch this episode para mag-gets nyo ang review ko. So, basta, the second gear shift happened within Sayu's backstory, right? It is the, it's the main reason why she left Hokkaido. Bakit niya nilayasan ng nanay niya? Right? It's the main reason. Basta yun lang, ano, etc. Etc. from that. Right? Basta I don't want to go into the details, watch that episode. Of course, then, final gear shift came is when the blonde girl asked Yoshida, Uh, what he wants to do about Sayu. Um, kasi, kinalma lang na, kinalma lang, kinalma lang ni blonde girl eh. Si Sayu. That's, uh, that's a very traumatic, it's a, it's a very traumatic past story. So, talagang, hakalmahin niya yun. And, well, and as a result, she's now asking Yoshida kung anong ano gusto niyang gawin para kay Sayo. Right? Napaisip talaga si Yoshida. Napaisip talaga. If it weren't for that uh, gear shift, Yoshida wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be deep diving into the matter now. Right? Now, those three gear shifts, uh, uh, yung second gear shift, okay, that played a role in the entire anime so far. Okay. That played a role in the entire anime so far. The first and the third, well, of course, uh, the way I see it, will play a role in uh, on, the, on, the, on this road to the finale which has started. Okay. It started with episode 9. Higehiro is 13 episodes, so episode 9 starts the road to the, is the beginning of the road to the finale. Right? So, plot naman. Well, carried over from the final scene of the last episode. And, what's called this? Um, no sleeper moments. Again, by this enemy. No sleeper moments. Kasi, um, talagang sensitive yung backstory ni Inoy. Uh, medyo sensitive yung backstory ni Sayu. So, talagang, you won't be able to blink with her backstory. I guarantee you that. Okay? Guarantee ko sa inyo yan. You won't be able to blink with Sayu's, pla- Sayu's backstory. Kaya no sleeper moments in this episode. So, yeah. Malinis. Okay? Malinis ang plot ng episode na to. Talagang, these are, these are the very few backstory episodes na, na talagang tututukan mo from start to from start to finish and you won't say it's it's pathetic it's ano no because it is happening now in real life okay totoong nangyayari ito okay so talagang uh, it's relatability makes makes the plot clean the relatability of this episode made the plot really clean yeah means the plot Wow. I never thought uh, Sai would have 
uh, a backstory that sad. So again, it's a it's another good episode from the side. So, Higehiro episode nine. Yeah, two thumbs up. All right, two thumbs up. Well, I'm not giving the two thumbs up because uh, I am I. I was happy about no no no. I was happy about the episode. Now now, I was. Uh, it brought out it brought out the sadness in me. Right? It's a really sad backstory. Okay? So it's not pathetic. It's not. Uh, it's not outrageous. Okay? Talagang, this was a totally relatable episode. Right? We are dealing, the episode dealt with a real social issue. Kaya, well, I would be an idiot to not give it the two thumbs up. Because, well, it's probably the most relatable episode of this anime. So, why give it a lower rating? Why? Right? That's, because that's how the otaku lifestyle should be. Right? You're an otaku, you find something relatable in an anime, you find something educational, you find something uh, that you, some something in an anime that you could deep dive into. Well, ask and you shall receive. We got an episode here of Higehiro that we can deep dive into. Another one. Right? During the first six episodes, well, I, I could not deep dive into it, eh? But from episode 7 onwards, boy, up to 9, ito, ito, ito. Especially, uh, it's, a, it's a social issue. It's a really serious social issue. So, you are now compelled to deep dive into this episode. That's why I gave it the 2000. Right? So again, Higehiro episode 9. Thumbs up. Two thumbs up, Maka Lifestyle. Oh, title of the next episode has been teasered. Are you enjoying Are you enjoying the first anniversary edition so far? Well, like it or not, comment, be comment below. So, um, medyo, medyo nakakaintriga title. So, we're going to, we're going to wait for that next week. And, I hope, uh, your view of the next reviews will help you. Uh, will help you. Uh, what's it called? Help you be nostalgic about the about this entire anniversary edition, right? Enjoy the next reviews. Impressive. Why? What? Well, basically, um. We all found out here that uh, Gugu is, uh, is, a, uh, is a monster in, in, in the physical sense of the word. Absolutely. I say, been an experiment on para siya ni Boosman when he was uh, when he was totally disfigured. All right. So, nalaman na lahat, especially si Fushi, especially Fushi. Pero, no one looked for him. So, he bounced around from house to house, from job to job. Then, final scene. Uh, Fushi decided to look for him. Ayun, natat ng siyang kinikidnap ng dalawang, uh, siguro, parang mga dalawang, mga, mga, parang mga maggagancho ito eh. Ba bala pa siyang ibenta sa ano eh. Bala pa siyang ibenta. Uh, I don't know where. Uh, no details. At all, uh, Fushi did what what he uh, what he must do. Uh, he rescues uh, he rescues Gugu. So, sinabi niya na basically he said to Gugu, "I can't grow up without you." So, can we say they're uh, they're brothers now? Yeah, we can. 
overall, it's a really good episode. Alright? I can't... I can't... Uh, tell you... Uh, enough on how good... On how good to your eternity is as a whole. But for this particular episode... Uh, wow. Alright? Um... Fushi has finally learned to value others. Parang ganun yun eh. So, again, another empowering episode from this anime. Pace-wise. Um, medyo may kabilisan, pero it's not in a bad way. It's not in a bad way. Kasi, Gugu uh, bounced around from, from house to job to house to job to home. Uh, so much as we well, we needed to pick up the pace a little bit right say everywhere he goes yeah everyone sees him everyone everyone sees him as he is a monster right and uh, yeah it felt it felt depressing for him so moderately fast pace in the middle third of the episode really uh, showed us how uh, how depressing it is for Bubu. And, well, in a way, for Fushi. Kasi, right now, doesn't know anything about housework. Kumbaga, siguro, inutuso lang siya ni, ni Gugu na gawin ito, gawin ito, gawin ito. Without actually telling him why. Alright? So, eh, kaya niya hinarap si, eh, kaya niya hinarap si Gugu. Because, well, like he said in the final scene, I can't grow up without you. Right? So, exacto lang yung pace. Oy, di ba ito rating ko ha? <laughs> exacto lang yung pace. Right? It's just right for the episode. Um, ano mga tsunod? Flow! Okay, ito yung nakakalimutan. Ito yung nakakalimutan. Flow! What? First gear ship there was uh, when Rin decided to uh, to live there and work there. Pero she's working. She's going to work for free, right? Parang ano eh? Parang yung deal. Yeah, parang deal nila Google Fushi. Parang ganon yun eh. Why is that? I think she's only doing that just to get close to Fushi. But anyway, so uh, probably because of that gear ship, tumakbo na yung tumakbo na yung episode, alright? Because there is a um, so all this someone from someone from the higher class, okay? someone from high society decides to decides to live there. A, uh, live with a cook, an old crone, an alien, and a monster. Alright? Without any inhibitions. Nope. Walang... Nakita man natin lahat na walang kaere-ere sa katawan itong si Rin. So, okay lang. So, we're in. Second gear ship is... Well... Google decides to... Uh, Google decides to run away. Alright? And the strange part about that is... Nakita na siya ni Fushi na lumalayas. And all Fushi did was sleep. In his, in his warp form, ha? He's in warp form. And all he, all he did was sleep. Okay, I think he just slept it off. Parang siguro, parang, parang siguro, nananaginip lang siya. Yung yung yu pala, totoo na palang naglayas na pala si, ano, totoo palang naglayas na si Gugu. Final leadership game is of course when Gugu was being kidnapped. Nakuntunan siya ni Fushi. Mm. Fushi rescues him. Alright? You know, if it weren't for that gear shift, hindi ma-affirm yung... I don't wanna call it friendship anymore. A brotherhood. Yung brotherhood nilang dalawa ni, ni Gugu. Alright? 
we can consider Google a mentor to Fushi kasi mga gawain bahay, yung mga yung mga bagay-bagay sa buhay, natutu- natututunan niya kay Google yun. Right? Natututunan niya. Because um, we all know Google's backstory. Right? Iniwan siya sa ere ng kanyang kuya to, to, be a, to be a full-time loser. Seen that scene? Doon nagkita sila uli ng kuya niya? Yun. That was the time. He, he finally severed his ties with his, with his biological brother. He wants nothing to do with him. Right? That was a, that was a satisfying scene. Right? To have, a, uh, to have a loser brother like that? Nope. Sorry. We're not related. <laughs> Anang ganun na yun. Okay. Now, uh, the first and the last gear shifts that I saw here will probably play a role in future episodes. Alright? Will prob- probably play a role. Uh, kasi, the last gear shift, of course, talagang Devin. Sigurado yan. So, no matter what happens, they're brothers. Okay? No matter what happens, they are brothers. Then, of course, the first gear shift kasi, parang third force si ano eh. Parang third force si Dean sa asosasyon ito. Alright? I think she will be the, uh, she will be the conscience of the group. Alright? Go with that. Who she's, who would jump siya. Siya yung magiging konsyensya. She will probably, she will probably teach Fushi how to listen to his conscience. Now, conscience is the very foundation of, good, of the concept between good and evil. Diba? Yeah. Kasi, if you don't have a conscience, you're not human. Bottom line. Probably, Reed will, uh, will teach them both that. Okay. So, Another great episode from this great anime. So, to your eternity, episode 8. Thumbs up. Well, I realized uh, after watching this episode that, that this was another empowering episode from this anime. Excuse me. Bakit empowering? Kasi there was another uh, there was another important life lesson Fushi learned here. Right? Fushi has learned to value uh, other people. Just to, to value the people around him. And it's a more specific term. Okay? It's a more specific term. Because, well, you can't do it all alone. You can't be a know-it-all. You cannot. Um, you can't take responsibility for things you really don't know anything about. Ako, mga lifestyle. So he wanted to learn housework, so he first turned to Pioran. Ayon siya to Juan. Now Pioran's reason was uh, she doesn't want to spoil Fushi. Probably she probably wants Fushi to learn this on his own. But, may point si Bjoran. May point, may point si Bjoran. Because, self-learning is key to, is key to a human survival. Right? Pero, um, it'll be very hard if someone doesn't teach you the basics. If someone doesn't give you tips, advice, or anything, it's hard to start on something. So, uh, Fushi figured na, he needs Google. Google. Not only because of uh, of this of their friendship, of their brotherhood. Lalo lalo na yung ano niya, yung nalalaman niya sa sa buhay buhay. Right? That's the kind of input Fushi probably uh, seeks out the most. Yung ganon. So, which led to a very empowering episode. This. One. Uh, basically, that's the moral lesson of this episode. Okay? Learn to trust. Learn to trust other people. Okay? 
After all, trust. Uh, after all, trust is earned. So, well, and of course, learn to value other people. Right? Yun ang, yun, yun ang lesson na na natutunan ni Fuji dito. That's why I called it an empowering episode. So again, to your eternity, episode 8, two thumbs up. So next episode has been teasered and all right. Um, uh, well, something's good about to happen. Something good is about to happen to Fushi, Rian, and Gugu. Uh, Rian, Rin, pala. Rin and Gugu. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Right? I am looking forward to that. Yeah, at magigawa natin. Hintayin na natin at panoorin. Whoa! I'll tell you why. Kasi, um, Otokawa uh, finally saved si, uh, si Kakihana, best friend niya. Wow. Uh, Kakihana, Kakihana is a no great shape. Far from it. Everything seemed to come together for Otokawa and for both Otokawa and Dobu, right? Excuse me. Both Otokawa and Dobu got shot at by Skull Mask, who's also a uh, panaka. And, um, well, iniwan na lang ni Otokawa si Dobu doon. Final scene. Um, Guriki is uh, currently investigating his own friend, si Otokawa. And he, founds, and he finds out that uh, both Otokawa's parents are dead na. And he's been uh, living... He's been uh, renting out in that apartment since fifth grade. So grade five palang do do na talaga nakatira si Otokawa. Wow, right? So basically, Otokawa has been living alone since fifth grade. So, nalaman na ni Doctor Gurigi yon. Nalaman na nalaman na nito. And Um, the house Otokawa lives in is now empty. Wala na siya doon. So, basically, no one knows where Otokawa is now. Nagpalang na, siya, nagpalang na pala siya sa kanyang kasera. Who's also, who also served as his guardian. Kasi siyempre, bata. Kasi nung bata pa siya, he needs a guardian. Landlady niya ang nagtayong guardian. Ang nagtayong guardian niya. Wow. Right? Um, I never thought Dobu had it in him that he would um, that he would convince someone like that to go straight right coming from a coming words coming from a criminal like him from a thug like him okay so overall it's a really good episode right it's a really good episode pace pa lang first half of the episode was yeah, you, you can consider it fast kasi eh, pinagpabari sila Otokawa Dobu eh, ni, ni Skull Mask wow okay. does this guy ever does this guy ever give up grabe all for just uh, all for just a failed level up in an online game Papanayin na yun. Willing na siya pumatay ng tao. Particularly si Otokawa. To, uh, uh, if you could deep dive into it, Dobo is just collateral damage here. Kasi natamaan siya eh. And, uh, uh, eventually, Skull Mask hunted down Dobo. So, tinamaan naman siya sa tuhod. Right? If the, the way I see it, uh, between Otokawa and Skull Mask, Dobo is just collateral damage here. Kung mga damay lang siya rito. Eh, he's not the principal character. He's not the principal character here. Right? So, yung pacing ng episode, first half, fast, then, so, then it gradually slows down. Kasi, um, si Kapasawa pala yun, yung vlogger. 
maghihipon na vlogger. So, kamasawa uh, begs for forgiveness to his audience. Siguro, talaga. Parang, siguro, parang, parang hindi siya patayin ni Dobu. The pacing was, uh, the pacing was really good. The pacing was really good. Kasi, of course, fast eh. Nakaabarilan eh. Nakaabubuga na rin. Alright? And then, of course, slow the aftermath. Quick, uh, uh, rather relatable aftermath. Okay? Then, flow naman. Of course, first gear shift is of course when Skull Mask started shooting at Dobu and Otokawa. Right? So, aside from, uh, aside from his mind being on how to save his friend, how to save his best friend, Otokawa now has to deal with this psychopath shooting at him. Alright? So, talagang, lalo niya minadali ang, lalo niya minadali ang pag-rescue. And, well, he doesn't, he also doesn't want Dobu to die. Alright? Kailangan, kailangan niya si Dobu eh. Then, second gear shift happened when... Oh! Yeah! That's a gear shift. When Dobu shows his motivational speaker side. Alright? He showed his motivational speaker side. Kinonvince niya si Kamasawa na ikilan niya lahat ito. Right? This is just... Well, he, he understands it. This is pure attention grabbing. Alright? Ika nga sa grupo ni Dobu. Ano, ano bang, ano bang, ano bang klaseng content yun sa'yo? Abay, eh, eh, pinag, pinagpeperahan mo ako eh. Ano klaseng content yan? Diba? So, no. Deep diving into Dobu's mindset, he, he's got a point. Okay? For a, for a wanted dog, he, he's got a point here. Okay? He's, he's, he's got a point. Kasi, eh, wala namang, wala, wala namang kwentang content itong ginagawa ni Kamasawa eh. And he's, and he literally goes after one of the, one of Tokyo's most wanted criminals just to, just to get attention. Aba, teka muna. <laughs> You're crossing the line. So, ika nga, yun ang, yun ang iniisip ni Dobo. That's why he was convincing Kamasawa to just stop all this, stop all this foolishness. And get back to and get back to his normal life. So, uh, well, that, that, that's exactly what Kapasawa did. The public apology show on his uh, on his uh, YouTube. See, <laughs> Google no YouTube on his YouTube channel, and he vows to to shut down all his social accounts. Right? And yeah, well, he probably did that because he doesn't want to. He doesn't. He doesn't want to to kill him. Right? Out of out of fear for life, narin siguro. So, third gear shift is um, uh, when the camera pan to Koriki's investigation of uh, Otokawa. Yun, yun nga, nalaman niya. Uh, wala na si Otokawa dun. Okay, he's, uh, he's left the place. He's, he's, he's left Tokyo already. He's left Tokyo already. So, yeah. Um, if it weren't for them, the second and third gear shifts of this anime will play a role on this road to the finale. Mm. You heard me, guys. We're now on the road to the finale of Odd Taxi. Because eh, final five episodes now. I just found out that Odd Taxi will only be a 13 episode run. Kaya, episode 9? Hmm. Road to the finale na. So, this, uh, the second and third gear shifts, again, will play a role in, uh, on this road to the finale. Right? That's the way I see it. Plot-wise, kaling. Plachado. Walang, uh, no sleeper moments, okay? No sleeper moments, definitely. And, most of all, uh, no hiccups. No hiccups. Parang yung magsisingi ka bigla ng, ng, uh, ng comedy scene. Whereas the scene is, uh, where the sequence is totally serious. Nope. Wala talaga. Just 
they really told the story of this episode smoothly and uh, with purpose. OLM and PIX were on a mission for this episode. Okay? Talagang, wow. Um, it really made me feel that it's all coming to a head. Uh, I actually felt this, this, that this was already the finale. <laughs> Kasi, Otokawa is trying to rescue his best friend, si Kakiana, sa tulong ni Gobu. Then, they're getting shot at by, ta- by Tanaka, also known as Skull Mask. Yeah, who's a total psycho compared to compared to either Yano or Dobo? Yeah, he's the real psycho here. He's the real psycho here. So, I think everything is coming together. That's what I felt in this episode. Kaya, I felt that talaga malinis ang plot ito. Malinis. Then, the aftermath, of course, uh, everyone's getting along. Uh, but, then this twist happens. Otokawa is gone. Uh, he left na. He left, uh, he left this place na. Uh, siguro nagtataka si Kuriki kung bakit bakit hindi na hindi na dumadalo sa kanya si Otokawa for his appointment. He had to investigate. He is a doctor. He is a doctor. And Otokawa is not just his friend but also his patient. Pasyente niya rin to. Yeah, concerned siya talaga. And, wow. Alright? It felt like the finale already. <laughs> not, uh, not the road to the finale. Right? So, wow. We did a lot of, I did a lot of deep dives into this episode. Right now, in this review. So, so yeah. Oh, let me fix just gave us another, uh, another great episode of this anime. Galing. Worth the time. So, Odd Taxi Episode 9. Thumbs up. Well, I don't know why OLM and Pix uh, announced the uh, announced the total run of Odd Taxi very uh, this late in its run. Because usually. Animation Studios would announce it siguro, at the very most, okay? At the very most, uh, three episodes in. And then, before the first half of the run pala is over. As in the case of uh, Cestus. As in the case of Cestus. No, nag episode four, do nam, I think that was, that was the time BN Pictures announced that it'll only be an 11, 11 episode run for for that anime. So, ganito rin. Pero, Odd, Odd Taxi was leaked talaga. Um, I think uh, right after episode 8, in announced na nung OLM and Pix na hanggang 13 episodes lang to. I thought, ba't ganito ka leak? Patapos na! But anyway, um, they must have been caught up with how uh, how good the episodes are, okay? how um, how well received the episodes, uh, the first eight episodes were. So uh, I think they, they really got caught up. On, they really got caught up in that. Uh, it's forgivable. If that's the case, then it's forgivable. Okay. Nine episodes in. Hindi pa rin kayo convinced sa Odd Taxi. I don't know. Right? So again, Odd Taxi Episode 9. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up, mga lifestyle. So next episode has been teasered. And, um, uh, so we're gonna find out what happened to Otokawa uh, after he, uh, after he left Tokyo. Parang gano'n na. It's probably uh, a new city. It's probably um, new friends, uh, new connections. Okay, um, a new and a new chance. Okay, and a new chance to just for us to connect the dots. So, can't wait! Can't wait for the episode. After all, 
We're already on the road to the finale. Impressive. Right? Well, it's still the aftermath of, uh, of the earthquake. Right? Then, uh, basically, Japan is in the rebuilding process. The whole of Japan. Now, um, Kurusu was able to meet up with uh, Suwa and Takeuchi. And while this is going on, Shepi, a military, will be meeting. And, and still, General Nakajima is still what? Pinagpipilit na parin yung uh, going primary unit, yung vampire unit niya. Right? And, um, looks like even the villains are in shambles. Right? The fraud is, um, doesn't like what he sees anymore. Right? He doesn't like what he sees anymore. Final scene. We go back to Tsukushima Island. Lo and behold, there's Colonel Maeda. It's Colonel Maeda yun. See the scar here? Siya yun. Alright. Overall, um, it's a good episode. It's a good episode. Pace! Well, I, I got no complaints about the pace. Okay? Natural. Um, everybody is, uh, Everybody is reeling from this earthquake. It's a, it's a really, it's a really, it was a really big earthquake. Right? It was so big that even Code uh, Zero HQ was di has, has been destroyed. Ganong alakas to. So understandably slow now pace. Uh, well, say uh, we really need to see. The viewer needs to see how. How devastated the characters are after this earthquake. Even Defraud, alright? Kulan nyo ay, si Defraud to ah! And now, he's now, um, he's now, what you call this? He's now rethinking his strategies, alright? He's now rethinking as to what he wants to do with his life. As to, um, kung gusto na niya yung well, obviously, hindi na niya gusto yung mga, nang, yung mga nakikita niya. Right? Hindi na niya gusto. Obviously. That's why he doesn't want to come out. Right? He had a hand in this whole vampire unit thing. Right? Uh, Flo naman, well, the only gear shift, the only thing I, the only scene I would consider a gear shift here is um, the frauds reality check, right? I think he's now he's now slowly slowly realizing that he's not the monster here, right? He's not the true monster here, but General Nakajima, right? So this will probably play a role if you in well, we are actually on the road to, to the finale, right? Mars Red is a 13 episode run. Kaya, kailangan tumuto na tayo. So, the Frots um, reality check here is the only thing I can, I can consider a gear shift because it will play a role down the road to the finale. Alright? Who knows? He might even help, he might even help out Code, Code Zero this time. In take in bringing down bringing down Nakajima, right? Who knows? That's just that's just a speculation of mine. Blood lies. Well, excuse me. Blood lies. Well, uh, even though it's a even though it's still an aftermath episode, it's still another at, aftermath episode, but. There were no sleeper moments in this one. Okay, there were no sleeper moments. Because you could see the sadness in everyone's faces, especially the vampires, right? Kaya tumadami ang mga numbers It's because of this vaccine 
na pinakawalan nila nila default at ni General Nakajima. Right? And so, most of the vampires that that are in Japan now, hindi sila pure vampire. They weren't bitten by another they weren't bitten by another vampire. They, they just they just became vampires because of this vaccine na binigay sa kanila. So, induced lang. Alright? The plot was sensible. Okay? Pero, I couldn't call na uh, I couldn't call na malinis eh. I could not call na malinis. Dahil, iba't ibang uh, points of view ang inano rito eh. Right? Completely different points of view ang pinakita sa episode na to. So, it was nicely done but hindi siya malinis. Hindi siya totally na malinis. Yun ang observation ko sa episode na to when it comes to the plot. Right? But, it's still a good episode from this anime. So, Mars Red Episode 9 Bakit? Kasi, parang inulit lang nila yung yung plot ng last episode. As if I as if I as if I was watching episode 8 all over again. Right? Pero um, despite that, I have no complaints with the uh, with the pace and the flow. Alam nyo, well, nakita nyo naman. Um, those were the those were the only things new to me. Yung Uh, yung reality check na yun na in-experience ni Defraud. Okay? That's the only thing that's new here. That's the only thing that's new here. So, if they um, showed um, at least one more gear shift that's entirely new to me, I might have given it the two thumbs up. Pero, That's the only gear shift I saw here. That's the only scene in this episode na nakita ko talagang gear shift and talagang something new. Right? Defraud's reality check. Right? Ayaw, ayaw niyang lumabas. Ayaw niya makakita ng ibang vampire. Looks like he is um, he's regretting that he's regretting that deal of his with, ano, with, with Nakajima. Talagang mukhang pinagsisisihan niya yung araw na yun na nakipag-deal siya, na nakipag-deal siya kay Nakajima. Kay Nakajima. Alright? So... Yeah, you could... You could feel sorry for him. Because, well... Hindi porget vampire ka, demonyo ka. Right? This ep- I gotta hand it... That's... That's what it, what's one thing I gotta hand to this episode. Hindi porkit vampire ka, demonyo ka. Well, Nakajima has, has proven that he's an even bigger demon than Defraud. Right? So again, Mars Red Episode 9. Tamap lang. What tamap na mga ka-lifestyle? So, title of the next episode has been teasered. Let's hope that, um, But usually kasi pag road to the finale there there will ha- they an anime will have hiccups here okay as in the case of King's Raid yep on the road to the finale they did a they did a recap episode that's the hiccup and of course this one Mars Red okay there, there will be enemies like that eh so Let's just uh, let's just hope that the next one the next one we're going to we're going to watch is a is an even better one. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to expect a more action packed one, but there should be more uh, there should be more crucial gear shifts in in the next one. So let's just cross our fingers for that, all right?
I can see is Merlin through the Magic League finally tells her entire backstory. Oh, to everyone's surprise, yung pala ang intent niya. Okay. Uh, well, because of her magic, Arthur is now alive again. Pero, uh, she has this hidden agenda. And well, Meliodas well, ask for a straight answer. You'll Binigay, binigay niya sa lahat sa lahat ng seven deadly sins and even uh, Arthur. Final scene. Well, all we saw was a look of shock from everyone, especially si Meliodas. Okay. Uh, I never expected this to. Uh, this to happen for this uh, for this kind of a twist uh, this late uh, this late in this uh, this late in, uh, in any anime's run right so overall it's a really good episode okay base well First third of the episode, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of bot, bot, eh, eh, so definitely uh, the pace is slow right there. Then uh, come to the latter two thirds of the episode, ayana, uh, medyo bumilis, right? Because uh, Merlin's entire backstory was wow. It was rather intense. Yeah, while, while, while I was uh, while I was uh, watching it, uh, that part of that part uh, that part where Merlin told her entire backstory. Well, actually, the Magic Lake told Merlin's entire backstory. Because he didn't want to tell it to the people he was with, right? And well. It was, despite the entire backstory thing, uh, uh, I don't know, it was, the pace was quite unusual for me, right? Uh, it's, uh, it's neither good nor bad, okay? I'm having, uh, I'm having mixed emotions right now when it comes to the pace. I gotta be honest with you, mga So, Flo naman, po, um, first gear ship I saw here was when Merlin um, teleported everybody back to the Magic League. Where uh, Hawk and his mom, wala, matipaboy na ganoon that, that, uh, where, uh, where Meliodas' pub is sitting on. Yun. Well, actually, um, Hawk's mom is waiting there. So, tsaka na dumating si Hawk. So, so nagtaka sila kung bakit, bakit, bakit sila dinala ni Merlin doon. And, well, lo and behold, uh, in front of them, Merlin revives Arthur successfully. Pero, there was a price to pay. Was a price, there was a price to pay, and um, well, the uh, final gear shift of this episode came when uh, near the end of the backstory, the magic lake tells that ito ang intent ni Merlin, bakit niya, bakit niya ni revive si Arthur, okay, she wants to bring chaos back. Not the uh, not the little word, but chaos is an entity in in uh, in the universe of the seven deadly sins. Okay. Chaos created the demon king, the supreme deity, and uh, 
the sacred tree. Everybody now is aware of uh, Merlin's true intentions. Okay, if it weren't for that gearship, hindi natin malalaman lahat. Okay, so I wouldn't say it's a great episode, but uh, due to the ominousness and well the rather tense uh, the tense back storytelling it made, it's a really good episode right okay so before we before we actually read it I'm gonna I, I, I forgot I forgot the plot okay I forgot to read the plot when it comes to when it comes to the plot yeah Malinis okay, Malinis uh, I did not expect Merlin to, uh, to to tell it to tell all this way. Uh, to teleport the lahat ng seven deadly sin at mga kaibig, at mga kaibigan niya doon sa Magic Lake. Ah, uh, hindi ako na right? So that means for me, malinis ang plot. Okay, malinis talaga ang plot. So again, uh, it's a really good episode. So, the seven deadly sins, Dragon's Judgment, episode twenty-one. Yeah, two thumbs up. All right, a conditional two thumbs up. Let me be. Let me be clear on that, mga kalaista. Bakit? Kasi it's the type of episode that you would. That you should justify uh, with another episode. Because there are many, many storylines in, in uh, whether it be anime, whether it be live action, whether it be uh, Western cartoons. There is such uh, there is such a storyline. Nah. In this case. Uh, where I give an episode that I give the two thumbs up, a conditional two thumbs up. Now, uh, the way I see it, it's uh, this is the episode that will set up the. Uh, what do this? I wouldn't want to say the final battle. A final. Um, the final uh, score to settle. Between, between long time friends, well, we all know that uh, Elodas and Merlin have been uh, have been friends for the longest time. Merlin actually helped Melodas uh, form the Seven Deadly Sins. Kumaga, they are the co-founders, si Merlin and si Melodas, because they're both immortal. Okay, they've been they've been. Uh, They've been friends for practically more than three thousand years, now. <laughs> All right. So, uh, wow. So, in all indications from this episode, my two thumbs up should be justified by the next episode. So, kumbaga. Baga probationary ang two thumbs up ko. I still give it the two thumbs up because of, uh, of the backstory that we that, that, that I just found out here. Right? A, um, a long time, a plan that was um, that has long been ironed out by Merlin. Okay? A plan that was 3,000 years in the making, practically. And wala siyang sinabihan sa planong ito. Not even Melodas. Okay. Not even Melodas. So uh, this would this would have reper this this would definitely have repercussions in the next episode, right? Um, more likely, um, some of the Deadly Sins will now have trust issues against Merlin, and probably the first one that would probably develop that is Melodas, because. Eh, They've been friends for 3,000 years, right? They actually um, co-founded the Seven Deadly Sins. Okay, 
essentially. So, but I, but I am feeling confident right now that uh, that uh, Studio Team will uh, justify uh, this episode's rating with with the next episode, with the upcoming one. All right, say. So, yeah. If the uh, if the episode if the next episode is could not justify this one, I might give that the lower rating, not this. I say I'm already given it my rating, kind na uh, kind na conditional. Yeah, it'll stick. It'll stick. I I don't want to change that. Right. So we'll have. We'll now have to rely on the next episode, on what's going to happen there, on how it's delivered, on how Studio Dean will deliver it. So, para masabi natin na talagang deserving uh, episode na to ng two thumbs up to. Alright mga kalaistan, let's set that in stone. So again, the seven deadly sins Dragon's Judgment episode 21 Conditional 2 thumbs up mga ka lifestyle Remember that So uh, Next episode has been teaser uh, Okay mm. Looks like uh, Ah uh, I don't trust teasers I'm only speculating uh, But here's my speculation Merlin is going to uh, going to push through with their plan. Okay? So, uh, we'll see. We'll see if that episode will uh, will vouch for this one. For, will vouch for this episode 3. Right? Kaya, tutok pa more tayo. Remember, we are now down to the last three episodes of this anime. Kaya, whether that episode sucks or not, kailangan pa rin natin panoorin. Wow! Right? Uh, it's probably the first time I've given a... I've... Uh, I've... Wow! For... A backstory episode. Right? Kasi... Uh, this is the first time Iori told his backstory. And oh wow! Right? The truth is finally out. Okay. The truth is now out. Everybody knows who actually uh, massacred the Karasumori clan. Right? What's that? Final scene. We picked up where we left off in episode 9. Diretsa na siyang tinanong ni Isawa. Ikaw ba ang pumatay sa mga kamang-anak ko? Ikaw ba ang umubos sa angkan ko? Basically, tinag... Uh, I, only, uh, I only said it in Filipino. But, I'll also tell it to you in English. Did you kill my entire clan? That's when the episode ended. Right? That was tense. Okay. What's that? It was... It was, uh, it was really tense for most of the episode. Okay? Overall, it's a really good one. It's a really good episode. I'm gonna... Well, let's, let's break it down first before I... Uh, let's break it down... For, let's break it down uh, so that we can... So that we can... Uh, so that you can fully understand what rating I'm going to give this one. Base! Um... Umpisa pa lang ng episode, tense na. Right? Papas papasok pa lang si Sawe eh, sa conference room. Right? Ito pa lang, ito pa lang tense. Ito pa lang naka, nakaka-tense na. Then, all of a sudden, Pace. I don't know if you can call it fast or slow because uh, Yori's backstory started with Janome about to, 
about to experiment on him again. John Ome, when, when, he, when he was still human, huh? when he was still human, right? So, then, um, he got recruited by Nui on orders of, uh, on orders of the Shogun himself, si Tokugawa. So, pace slowed down, then, um, in the latter one third of the episode, oy, okay. So, nung nalaman na ng buong anime fandom kung sino talaga ang nagmasaker sa mga karasumori, right? It was Iori all along. See, well, he now, which he now goes by the name of Kusuhara. Okay, so, kasi, hindi na nyo eh. How convenient for Iori to, uh, to rescue Sawa. Okay, kung talagang si Janome ito, wala siyang hindi. Uh, baka wala siyang patayin sa mga to eh. Alright? Kasi, they can all be test subjects for his experiments. He will not waste a life that way. So, after all, he is a scientist. Right? How convenient for Iori. So, yun pala. Si Sawa lang pala ang itinira niya sa buong Karasomori clan. The rest, pinagpapatay niya. And this was on orders of the, of the, of, uh, of the Shogun. Ito ko gawa mismo. Wow! Okay. Pero, um, the episode was properly paced. But not as much to, uh, to totally, to totally bore the audience to death. Right? Kasi, ako, for one thing, uh, this is the first time Iori told his backstory. I am really interested. I am really interested as to uh, how uh, how this character plays out in this anime. Pala. Okay, now we know. Okay, now we know. Flow naman. Well, first gear ship is of course when uh, 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 was when oh. Well, Yori tried to escape. Right? Kasi, hindi niya ikinwento to, none of us would know the, the entire flow of his backstory. How he started with Nui. Right? Uh, second gear ship is of course the massacre scene. Wow! Okay. Garit, garito pala ganito pala katindi pumatay si Iori. Right? And, um, he spared Sawa. Who was, uh, was just a, was just a, was just a wee little girl when this happened. Right? Pero, uh, there was a scene prior to the, prior to that gear ship we're in. He already knows his orders. Pero, Sawa's mother was really kind to him. On the night itself, the night of the massacre itself, so hours before he, uh, he carried out his he carried uh, he carried out his orders. And, and while he was um, while he was eating all of this, he was crying. Uh, proof talaga na he's totally against this this order by Tokugawa. But defiant, defiance of it means means death, right? Say, oras na sinuway mo ang utos ng Tokugawa, utos ni Tokugawa, ipapapatay ka na. Ganun lang yan. That's how cruel uh, the Tokugawa regime is. Kaya, uh, if you ask me, there's anybody to blame, it's none other than Tokugawa. It's not other than the Tokugawa regime. Because of what? Bottom line! Pinaglaroan, pinaglaroan, pinaglaroan ang mga buhay nila eh. Why just one, why just one man? Now, final gear ship is of course we go back to... Um, in, in, to 
us back to that final scene in episode 9. Okay nga, tinanong nga ni Sawa, Did you kill them all? Talagang, dili, talagang dinirecha siya ng tanong ni Isawa. The final two gear ships will, will now play a role in the final two episodes. That's the way I see it. Mga kung tatanong ni Hino, uh, I got the speculation that Sawa and Iori are going to kill each other in the final two episodes. Yun lang ang nakikita ko. Based on uh, based on the final two gear ships of this episode. That's uh, yun ang nakikita kong mangyayari dito. We are in for a for a really violent finale. We are in for a violent finale. Right? So plot wise, again, malinis. Malinis ang plot ng episode na to. No sleeper moment. It's Joran. I don't remember having a sleeper moment with this, with any episode of this anime. I don't remember having a... I don't remember doing this while watching an episode. This is no different. Right? Talagang, even though it's a backstory episode, it kept me too... It kept me on edge. Talagang... Talagang natense ako, right? Natense ako during the massacre scene. So, tang ina ka, Iori. Ikaw pala may pakan. Ikaw pala pumatay sa lahat ng mga to. Right? And his his scapegoat to Sawa was Janome. All along, sinasabi niya kay Sawa na si Janome ang pumatay sa mga to. But on orders of Tokugawa, siya, siya talagang pumatay. Wow! Grabe. Uh, and to, well, and, uh, well, to my speculation, and to see these two killers go at it for the finale, yeah, I would, I would wait for that. I would wait for that. Kasi, Yun nga, although na back, puro backstory ito, well, it's just it's just one person's backstory. No? Malinis pa rin ang plot. Okay? There were no sleeper moments. Every, uh, every, every, uh, every scene from Iori's backstory is crucial to the, to the final two episodes. Right? Especially those two gear shifts within that backstory. And then, especially the gear ship that was within that backstory, it will play a role, probably in the finale. Alright? So, for all, so another really good episode with this anime. Wow! Okay? So, Joran the Princess of Snow and Blood, episode 10? I almost forgot the episode number. Doing in pa! Two thumbs up, alright? Two thumbs up. What? Um, side notes. You can't blame Sawa for asking that question. Well, she's, she's an adult, right? Uh, she now has that ability to connect the dots and formulate her own theories as to what really happened that night. Right? Kasi... Sawa's mother was was actually uh, was actually really kind to uh, to Iori. Okay? Hindi mo pinuod nila dala pa sila pagkain on on his uh, on his guard duty. Right? And pero tingnan mo, pero tingnan mo. May pinagmanahan si Sawa. Right? Did you see uh, how her mother transformed into that new new went slow demon mode? Halos pareho kay Sawa. Halos pareho. Right? Grabe. And she used the same crow si, Sa, si Nana. So, kumaga, uh, Nana has been has been that particular family's guardian spirit. Right? Kasi, uh, kahit nung araw pa, uh, siya na talaga 
yung family talaga ang pinipili ng ng umak na to. Right? So, first, yung nani ni Sawa. Then, when when the mother died, lumipan na siya kay Sawa. Talagang, he automatically chose Sawa. Talagang, uh, uh, constant companion ng family ni Sawa ito. Right? So, wow. If we can deep dive naman into that, uh, on how on how Tokugawa uh, runs the country. Right? Tumibalag si Janome because of he's a power hungry douchebag. Basically. He wants that power all by himself. Now, uh, when it came to Tokugawa himself naman, he too wanted what the power he wanted was from the blue blood of the uh, Tokaraso Moris. No matter how, how many times he has invited them, they turned it down. So, well, uh, Tokugawa, the prime boss that he is, no one turns well, He's got the mentality that no one turns it down. So, ang ginawa niyang scapegoat ngayon, si Janome. Siguro sinabi lang niya kay, pinasabi lang niya kay Iori na, Janome is getting close to that village. So, Yori has that choice. You know, Yori has the lo- uh, has that logic running for him now. In- instead of um, letting this village fall into Janome's hands, Tokugawa just might as well have them killed. Have them all killed. Para wala namang kagamit sa kanya. Para wala namang kagamit sa kanila. That's how sick and twisted the Tokugawa regime is. Right? If, you, if, you would, uh, if you would look at it that way. Right? They are... He is a manipulative... He is a... Uh, but... Yeah. Totally evil Shogun. Right? Now, uh, there's another way I see it. Regards, regards to uh, uh, the potential friction Iori and Salvo will now have in these, uh, these next two episodes, in the final two episodes. Probably, uh, they either talaga, literally kill each other in the finale, or Iori would, uh, would convince Sawa first to join forces against the Tokugawa. Right? Kasi kung titignan nyo, they're just both, they're both victims here. Para lang silang ginamit na Tokugawa, si Iori at saka si Sawa. Okay? So they, so, well, Tokugawa conveniently changed their names to Kusuhara and Um, now I remember her name Yukimura so Iori and Sawa had uh, their names changed to Kusuhara and Yukimura respectively it's bottom line well, the Tokugawa the Tokugawa regime is the Tokugawa regime is downright manipulative right I don't know if makikilig pa si Sawa sa kanya. Right? It was right for Sawa to to eliminate Janome. Okay? Talagang threat siya. And I don't know how she is going to deal with Iori now. Pero more likely, magpapatayan ang dalawang ito sa finale. Or even as early as the next episode. Kasi wala naman tinisar. Right? So, what we're gonna do? What? Well, you... If you haven't watched Joran, utang na loob. Panoorin nyo na. Alright? We're now down. Da- it's now down to its final two episodes. And the way I see it, 
magpapatayan sila in glory at sawa rito. Okay? I think that's how the finale is going to go down. Or the final two episodes. It'll, it'll probably be, yeah. In all likelihood, it'll be a probably, it'll probably be a long panel scene. Right? Yeah, but Let's just watch it. So again, Jordan the Princess of Snow and Blood, episode 10. So, well, like I said a while ago, no teasers. What's our job now? Wait for the next episode and watch it. I'm impressed, right? Here's how it went down, right? The bottom line of this episode is, well, Cestus is, although he's on a win streak, outside the, outside the arena, he's in a slump of sorts. Parang ganun. Kasi, he just couldn't, uh, what is He just couldn't get his, um, Rhythm going. Yun ang, yun ang napansin sa kanya ni Safar. Safar told him, I am not going to teach you word for word from now on. You will have to discover this yourself. Or so, something to that effect, right? So, using, uh, using the pickaxe training uh, Safar gave them, well, Cestus discovered it for himself eventually. Right? Final scene. Uh, Nagpresinta na si Felix kay Cestus. And when they parted ways, well, they, they sized each other up. Alright? They sized each other up behind each other's backs. Wow. Right? Medyo tense yung final scene na yun. Pero, you can see the look on Cestus' eyes. Uh, so, kaya siguro, kung mapapalaban ako sa gago ito. <laughs> right? Overall, it's a really good episode. Okay, it's a really good episode. Uh, let's talk about the pace first. The, the pace was uh, The pace was properly done. Okay. Of course, uh, the opening scene was uh, Cestus was in the middle of a fight. And he was content by uh, by knocking down his opponent. He was down. Pa niya. So, he was trying to the referee. He was trying to get him out of the way. He was trying to get So, he was trying to get Cestus out But, after the match, he felt frustrated. Right? That too was tense. Kasi, uh, he talked back at Zafar. A thing, something he doesn't usually do. Uh, it's the first time he's done it, actually. So, kahit si Zafar na nagulat sa kanya. And, well, then the pace slowed down. Then, um, then come another fight. Alright? The pace picked up again. Medyo nag, uh, it, was at an, it was at an all-time high here when he discovered his epiphany, or oh, that's the title of the episode. That was medyo, ganon, base. When, uh, when he was met up by, when he was met up by Felix, right? Anong uh, initiative? Remember, if you've seen the episode, ang nag-initiate ang contact dito si Felix, not Cestus. Cestus was busy, uh, well, was busy bonding with his, bonding with his, uh, with his mates. Parkata niya. So, this episode was properly paced. Okay? Uh, talagang, hindi ako... Uh, 
I have no complaints. Okay? It was no, I have no complaints. Talagang, uh, it was properly done. The pacing was properly done. Flow naman. Uh, first gear shift is of course when, um, yeah, I myself was, sur was surprised when um, Cestus was picking down on his opponent. A thing, another thing that he doesn't usually do. That's the first gear shift. Sabi ko, Uy, tama na yan. Baksak na yung kalaban mo eh. At uh, titirahin mo pa ng ganyan. Okay. Uh, today, you, you do that in modern in modern modern boxing you do that today wala that's uh, totally unsportsman like points deductions here or worse uh, the referee can disqualify you <laughs> the referee can disqualify you but uh, during Cestus's time no kahit beat down hindi uh, pipigilan ka lang ng, ng referee kung talagang hindi na luman talagang hindi na pumapalag yung halaman mo right Beatdowns are sort of allowed during those times. Pero, uh, it's quite it's quite sad to see Cestus that way. Kaya, I classified that scene as a gear shift. Right? Um, second and final gear shift game when, of course, he had that um, during, uh, during, his, during his next win in the episode, Parang, oh, he had that hallelujah moment. <laughs> yup, that's a gear shift. Bakit? Kasi, he has finally found his rhythm. Right? Kasi, uh, binis niya kasi dun sa, sa sakit na, 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 na nararamdaman niya to, every time he swings that big axe down. Kasi, syempre, you keep on, you keep on Swinging something like, a, like an axe, a hammer, uh, a baseball bat. Eventually, magkaka blisters ka sa kamay mo. If you keep on doing that for for hours on end, talaga puputok, puputok yung balat mo dito. Puputok yan. Uh, he wanted to, uh, he wanted to mimic. He wanted to, uh, he wanted to, yeah, he wanted to mimic that pain during the match. Eh, naramdaman niya. Uy, ito yun. Then, all of a sudden, PAK! Sinabayan niya yung yung left cross ng kalaban niya. Ni right cross naman niya dito. Boom! Bagsak! <laughs> uh, the, match was the match was over that quick. Alright? So, that's when he had his um, his hallelujah moment. Kaya okay, niya siguro, Ito ang rhythm ko. I found it! Uh, camera pans to Safar. With that uh, elated look on his face. Uh, kaya siguro. Congratulations, Cestos. You have found your rhythm. Right? The final gear shift will play a role in the final three episodes. This is what I'm seeing. Okay? Tandaan nyo, we're on the road to the finale. Which started last episode. Kaya, well, Cestus is only Cestus is only an 11 episode run. So, the road to the finale started in episode 7. Kaya, we're on our way there. It's now down to the final 3 episodes. Tandaan nyo. So, this gear ship will now play a huge role possibly in the final three episodes. Anywhere. Anywhere. Uh, anywhere in those three episodes. It will play a role. Alright? So, plot. What? Planchado. What I mean now by planchado or well ironed out is because, well, uh, you ex... I, uh, I 30% expected the the ending. Right? Pero malinis ang plot. Okay? Malinis. Malinis ang plot. Kasi, well, 
all uh, the way I see it, because uh, I am a physical therapy graduate, I, I've seen it. In, I've seen it in all in all professional athletes. Well, actually, all all athletes in general. All athletes have that certain rhythm, right? This is something they need to discover themselves. Okay? Walang coach na makakapagsabi sa kanila na, ito ang rhythm mo. No? Nah, that's totally uncalled for when you're a coach. If you want your uh, your ward okay, or your protege to, uh, to be really good at what he does, you need for him to discover his, discover that, uh, that, that athlete's rhythm himself or herself. Kailangan uh, as a coach you should step back for a while and let it uh, and let that athlete of yours discover it himself or herself. Right? Uh, as in the case of Cestos, yeah. Uh, alam na niya if he is in the zone already. That's the time. Uh, that is now the time Cestos should beat his opponent. But he's in the zone na. Maga rhythm na rin. Rhythm na rin yun. Right. Yeah. The plot, uh, talagang, well, the plot totally, uh, totally made me remember on how to develop rhythms. But actually, it's not just in, uh, it's not just in athletes, but in all uh, people who are striving for success. Musicians, politicians, businessmen, lalo, lalo na. And of course, even students, even students can develop this rhythm. If they're in the zone, they can answer almost any test question thrown at them okay, when they're in the zone. Ako, personally, uh, when I look back at my high school, high school days, I experienced this. When I'm in the zone, not even our valedictorian can uh, can can top me in this exam. Ganon ako nun. Ganon ako nun. Uh, whether or not na whether or not na nag-aral ako ng mabuti two nights or even the night before, when I'm uh, when, when I'm in that rhythm, when I'm in that zone, I can uh, there's the possibility of acing an exam is greater now for me. Ganun lang yan. Right? This uh, episode's plot made me recall that. Right now. Yun lang. Right? So, talagang planchado ang plot na to. Right? So, it's another great episode for this anime. And we're now down to the final three episodes after this. Which makes it more exciting. So, Cestus the Roman Fighter, episode 8. An empowering episode of that. Two thumbs up, right? Two thumbs up. Like I said, this, uh, this particular episode is an empowering one, right? You can, uh, you can take notes from what happened here. Ako, ngayon ko na nalaman eh. Ngayon ko na, na na-recall na I can develop that zone myself eh. Kahit nung estudyante ako. Right? Or, even when I was, uh, when I was still uh, active in being a salesman, when I'm in that zone, there's no way I can, there's no way I can't close a sale. Right? Kasi, nakita rin ng prospects ko nun na I'm really uh, I'm really betting my name on on this product or service that I'm selling kasi virtually kahit anong tanong ang itapon sa akin ng prospect I can answer it right now I, I can answer it I can answer it confidently and of course objectively and of course thinking about uh, what uh, what benefits the prospect the prospect can get from my product or service. Ah! Sabi ko sa inyo, Cestus also has that deep dive factor. Okay, 
this episode is no different. Okay, you can you you can actually learn life lessons from this anime. Well, as proven by episode eight. Then we recall that uh, once someone is in the zone, the best you could do if you're uh, if you're the if you're the person standing in front of that, if you're standing in front of that person, is to get the fuck out of the way and let him do his thing. He or she is in the zone. Ne. Kung kaibiga mo talaga siya, you should know. You should know when he or she is in the in his or her zone. Na. The best you can do, get the fuck out of the way and and cheer him. Just cheer him on. Let him do his thing. Let him shine! That's one thing about uh, what I've realized about this anime. Say, not only does it give us a history lesson, it also gives us life lessons. I've been saying this uh, since I first reviewed Cestus. Since I since I started reviewing this anime. That's what I've been that's what I've been saying. Since um Episode two or three, mga ganon. Yeah, magand magandang anime yung Cestos. Okay. It has that deep dive factor, and you can actually learn life lessons from it, not just the history lesson, right? So again, Cestos the Roman Fighter, episode eight. Two thousand. So next episode has been teaser. Eto na! Well, uh, probably the semifinals are over. And it's now the finals. It's between Cestus. It's, it's now Cestus versus Felix. If you ask me, I think the I think I think the finale is about to start. Alright? The finale won't be uh the finale won't be episode 11, uh, the final one. But the finale will start. Next episode. Yeah. Toto na. Sigurado. Bakbakan to. I'm not supposed to read to this review, but I accidentally deleted the original. So forgive me if I'm wearing this kind of a. It's kind of a shirt, right? After all, what? When I made the first ARD, I was wearing just this. It's quite nostalgic, if you ask me. <laughs> but anyway, well, Godzilla basically was on a rampage in episode 10, then in episode 11, uh, a few character we lost a few characters due to the uh, due to the uh, due to the rampage of other kaijus, and well, should we say that? Single organization is now has now joined the fray in uh, for the right to acquire the super dimensional calculator. Right? Their intent is not to it's not, it's not to destroy Godzilla, obviously. Right? And Final scene of episode 10 uh, well, just just showed Godzilla in, in all his uh, in all his mad glory. Final scene of episode 11, well, something something more uh, something more worthwhile. May and company are now at the core of the super dimensional calculator, so they're trying their darndest to. Um, Figure out a way on how to operate this. Okay, of course, with, of course, with Yun's help back in Japan. Overall, well, they're good episodes, okay, but not good enough because all things considered, this is the road to the finale. Okay, pace. Well, the overall pace was uh, 
was rather dense, okay? It was uh, considerably fast, but totally understandable because uh, everyone is in a race against time because, well, and it was a god ceiling. So he now complicates things. No one lapas out, they were just dealing with uh they were, they were just dealing with technically lower level kaijus. Right then Godzilla appears, well the playing field changes. Right? Understandable. Okay, the pace. I get it. When it came to the flow, um, the biggest gear shift in episode 10 was when Yun uh, theorized that the algorithm he the algorithm he saw in in Ashihara's in Ashihara's notes uh, can are able to predict the future, right? That's a what theory, right? But uh, I think uh, May, uh, yeah, May, I think partially agrees with him, and she consults that with Professor D. And wow, right? Uh, there is some truth. To, there is some truth to the doubt. Then, biggest gear shift in episode 11 was, of course, uh, May and company finding the core of this uh, super dimensional calculator, so, which uh, Professor Ashihara discovered uh, 60 years ago alongside with the skeleton with a wheel, which is now in the hands of this secret organization led by this blondie, this blonde guy. I forgot his name already. Then, all right. These two gear shifts I mentioned will play a role in the final two episodes, right? The way I see it. Okay, very crucial. Now, um, the plot. Well, By itself, Malini's a plot ng episode 10, but I couldn't say the same thing for episode 11. They deliberately skipped on an event that cost the life of Professor Lee okay, and, uh, and, her, and her other assistant. She is a crucial character in this anime, and for her to go out like, to go, to go out just like that, Holds in orange? I don't think so. Remember, guys. Okay, remember, remember, Mama Lifestyle. Professor Lee is a crucial character in this anime. She is May's advisor. Right? Ito ang nag recruit King May to, um, to help out in the singular point theory, in the theory uh, on the raw dance, the red dust, even even theories on Godzilla on why he is now here why he has already leveled Toku to the ground and for her to, uh, to, to just die without uh, showing the viewers how and the events that led to her death voila so, viewers are left hanging as to what happened to Professor Lee. Masa na lang sinabi nung episode, patay na siya. And her assistant. Lalaki. Um, regards to the plot of episode 11, hindi siya malinis. Right? Hindi siya malinis. I tell you guys. Well, good thing I'm going to Break both episodes at the same time, not individually. I'm going to give them one rating. Right? But nevertheless, um, these are these are these are good episodes. Okay. 
both of them are good episodes. So, Godzilla Singular Point episodes 10 and 11. Blame episode 11 for this. Come on, Um, if I were to uh, review this separately, episode 10 might have gotten the two, the two thumbs up from me, but for, for episode 11, somebody said I'm one, somebody said I'm one thumb up, sorry. I, I just could not uh, fathom why Bones and Orange did that to actually skip an event in a. In a in a uh, in a character's stay in an anime. Namatayan tayo ng isang crucial character dito, guys. You should have expounded. You should have gave us. You should have given us the deep dive as to how Professor Lee died. Right? Uh, let's say it's um crucial. Let's let's say it's disturbing. You think we care? <laughs> you think anime fans like me would care? Come on, guys. It's the road to the finale. Every scene... Every scene is crucial. Okay? Every gear shift and even the pacing is crucial. Everything. Okay? Everything is crucial. And we're, we're now down to... We're now down to just the final two episodes that was... I don't give. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't really get it. I don't really get it. Bones in orange. So again, Godzilla Singular Point episodes 10 and 11. So in typical Godzilla SP fashion, no teasers. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys that. So. Um, I am motivating. I am motivating myself right now to to still watch this anime because of what happened. Right? So, if you're done right now, all I need, all I need to do right now at this time, 2:07 a.m., is to collect myself and be prepared for the final two episodes. explain well um, basically kaya napawawa ko napawawa na naman ako ng ng Shaman King reboot is um Ryunosuke is back but this time he is now a Shaman <laughs> and of course well we got our first glimpse of how Shaman fight na to. Dahil, what? How is in? Uh, uh, he also uh, he also uh, considers himself as the Shaman King. Right? Final scene. Kaya pala siya bumalik ng China. Gusto na niyang hamunin sa isang laban ang mismong airpot niya. Si Tao In. Uh, si Tao In mismo. Oh? Uh, The welcoming committee uh, is there. It's a whole army. <laughs> well, uh, I think he's happy. Right? He has that. Uh, he's got that six smile again. Okay. Uh, major disturbing. <laughs> major disturbing. Yung iti ni Ren neon. Right. So that's the final scene. Whew. Overall, it's a really good episode. Right. It's a really good episode. Pace pa lang. Medyo. Mabagal sa first, probably the first half of the episode. Tapos, merong dumating na alipores ni Hao, kugulungin si, uh, ginugulo si Yo. That's when, 
That's when Rinoski stepped in. What? He has every right to interfere. Hindi pa siya man fight. Hindi pa siya man fight. Babal ibabalohura nyo na kaibigan mo. Yun ang, yun ang mindset ni Rionoski doon. Right? This, the, the actual shaman fight hasn't started yet. Eto na kayo. Gusto na niyang, gusto na niyang, gusto niya nang itong basiyo. Right? So, that's when the pace picked up. Then, I don't know, it was, it was a small, it was a slow scene, pero, nung nakita ko si, si How, parang, Okay. Pakita na si Hao. So, the pace has picked up even more. Alright? Hao technically uh, made a cameo in this episode. Pero, kung, kung tense eh. Nakaka-tense na eh. Alright? Nakaka-tense na. So, then, it picked up again during the final scene, of course. Ren is on his unfinished business. So, you can say that the entire episode was properly paced. Right? No, uh, the pace didn't pick, pick up in, in unnecessary scenes. Talagang justified your pace. Okay? Justified siya. Because, well, uh, the tournament committee advised every um, advised all the competitors to uh, just lay back a bit okay? because we are not nila sa umpisa ng episode your lives will never be normal again once this starts right so, may punto siya may punto yung uh, yung head ng tournament committee yung matandang yung malit na matanda she has a point. Because, well, looks like how is also in. Okay? So, um, flow naman. What? First gear shift was the opening scene. Okay? I can consider that a gear shift. Kasi, totoo yung sinasabi ng tournament committee doon. Right? Totoo yung sinasabi nila. Kasi, the real shaman fight starts uh, after this one. Okay? Baka talaga mo... Dito sila, dito sila talaga magpapatayan eh. Right? And second gear shift is what I consider... Uh, was the moment uh, Rinosuke nung ipinagtaboy na ni Rinosuke yung dalawang monk na monkeys as he, as he calls them tama ako monkeys right mukha naman mga hindi totoong monk eh pero uh, they revealed that uh, tauhan sila ni Hao so that's a gear ship right uh, in all indications from that gear ship Hao is now doing everything he can to stop Yo from from advancing this early ha Hindi pa nagsisimula yung totoong shaman fight. Gusto na niyang ipinapatumba na niya si Yo. Right? That means something. That means something. Alright? Pinapatumba na niya yung sarili niya kakambal. Alright? Uh, if you're... If you guys are um, are a fan of either the manga or the original anime, you'll, you'll get what I'm saying. You will get what I'm saying. Final Gearship is of course when... Uh, during that um, during that contemplation scene uh, Ren had okay, nung uh, when he took that um, yung show pao ino, inoferan siya kasi ng, ng isang show pao ng mag, mag lola to, to pass on surprise kinuha niyang gano'n at kinain sabi niya sarap pa Tagalog. I said it in Tagalog. I said it in Filipino. It tastes, it, 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 yeah, it tastes good to him. So, I thought, hmm. Then, uh, while he was alone with Basol, yung sinabi niya, people aren't so bad. Uh, 
because of you, I realized that people aren't so bad. Alright? So, doon pa lang, may impact na sa buhay niya si Yung. Okay? Just go, just go to show you. Just go to show you. The main protagonist is a people person. Si Yung. Alright? So, that's quite an empowering moment. That is quite an empowering moment for, uh, for Ren. Kumbaga, uh, nag-umpisa na yung kanyang character development dito. That's why I called it a gear shift. Because that character development will play will play a role later on in in the reboot. Probably like it was in uh, in the ori in the original. Ganun yan. So that final gear shift will play a role. Okay? Tagay niyo sa bato yan. Plot wise. Um Malinis. Malinis ang plot. No hiccups, no sleeper moments. Even though there were, uh, even though there were lulls in this episode, no, di ako nato. Because, um, uh, in all indications, this episode has shown us how, um, how friendship makes us human. Yan, all right. Um, aside from humor, friendship also makes us human. Okay? It's, it's probably, yeah, it's arguably one of the qualities we humans, uh, that, that separates humans from animals. Right? Friendship makes us human. It's, yeah, it's what I realized just now by watching, you know, watching, the, watching this episode. Okay? So the plot was, um, was clean enough to make me realize that. Yeah, well, you can say that Shaman King 2021 also has that deep dive factor. Mm. There you go. You, uh, I just realized a life, two life lessons. You know, you know, you know, deep dive factor. Okay. So, like I said a while ago, uh, it's a really, it's a really good episode. Okay, another really good episode from this people. So, Shaman King 2021 episode 10. Now, um, I don't know. Ah, wala pa wala ba kayo na pamansin sa 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 tinutuluyan nila? Talagang inner circle niyo. Nagi para nagigi hotel ni. Kasi <laughs> sino dito eh. Ah, uh, for uh, I think for two or three nights to mira si Ren. Si Horo Horo nandoon pa rin. <laughs> okay? Si Horo Horo tsaka yung kapatid niya, pa rin. And um uh, right and right now of course si Rinosuke bumalik dito. <laughs> okay? So para para nagigi hotel. <laughs> but um uh, eventually uh, I'm, I'm just basing it on the original scene, okay? Eventually, it will become uh, their... the house of the entire gang. Uh, well, the gang that Yo uh, built up for himself. Okay? But, uh, the friendships he has forged uh, all, along the, all along the anime. Because, hey, ang laking bahay, eh. And it's just Yo, Ana, and Manta. Tato na sila nakatira, so they 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 might as well they might as well take other shamans in. Pero kung hindi ka kaibigan niyo, hindi ka pa dito mira don. Right? So well, Ren sort of have sort of had have that privilege, because although it was his choice to um to to leave the house muna and go to, to go to China. I think yeah, he's welcome there. He's welcome there. He, he's proven that, right? He's proven that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Alta di alta di sosyo dad bento si Rene because uh, he comes from an illustrious Chinese family, the Taos, right? So, Bukod pa sa may influence siya, may ganon. Like uh, 
Remember that remember, remember that line he said in this episode? He said, I bought an entire building just for myself. So, ang gulang nga ni, ang gulang nga nila, horo-horo na ano eh. Kahit si Anna nagulat eh. Gulang, babe, ha? <laughs> Ikaw na siguro ni Anna, ba't ka nandito? Ba't ka to sa building mo? So, yeah. So, and, Pop, there's a, there was another moment there na, uh, Yo and Ren are starting to get on each other's nerves. Okay, then that that's the funny moment. In the original series, every time those two get on each other's nerves, natatawa ako. <laughs> okay? Oh, ano yun? Excuse me. So, every time Ren and Yo get on each other's nerves, talaga, it's always a funny moment. <laughs> it's always a funny moment. Grabe. Grabe. It's always a funny moment. Because, you have this, you have, uh, this, you have freewheeling Horo Horo uh, going up against super serious Ren. So, talaga, those are two opposite poles. Those are, those are opposing poles of the magnet. So, talaga, wow. It's, it's always, it's always a funny moment seeing them, seeing them, uh, Seeing them jaw at each other. <laughs> si Ren na si Horo Horo. It's always a fun, it's always a funny moment, right? Kaya, uh, personally, I am glad Shaman King is back. Kahit, kahit ni-reboot nila yung, ano, kahit reboot. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful, it's wonderful to watch this anime again. Right? So again, Shaman King 2021 episode 10. Two thumbs up. So, title of the next episode has been teasered. Well, we're going to continue this. Um, this uh, what's it called? What we're going? We're st- we're still on the anniversary edition of the ARD. So, kaya vertical pa rin. And intrigue ako sa title na two men. But like we saw, we saw in the last scene, um, Ren. Is now hellbent on killing his own father, okay, the source of his hatred. Right, so we better watch out for that. Wow! Puta ragis na yun, grabe. It felt like the series finale, right? Ito kasi malaki yung pwe. It felt like a finale already. Okay? So, uh, Shin was able to uh, euthanize his brother. Okay? Pero, uh, laking gulat na lang ni, uh, ni Lena na papunta, papunta, papunta silang natun sa parang unknown part ng mama. Alright? Thinking, thinking that uh, mo papa kamatay ng lima, uh, she runs out to help. Pero uh, uh, sa tingin niya hindi na hindi niya nabutan. So she just uh, she just cries her heart out. Right, final scene. Oh, uh, kind of like. It's like a ray of hope for Lena kasi yung comms nila yung comms nila Shin at yung mga natitira pa niyang yung mga natitira, mga natitira pa sa unit nila no signal so kasi kung patay na sila they were actually killed by the enemy lalagay yun lalabas yun as destroyed pero hindi no signal lahat silang lima This means they're still alive, right? Overall, it's a it's a fucking good episode. Grave. Unti ko nang unti ko nang iyasum na ito na series finale. Eh, la ko. This is an eleven. This is an eleven episode run. So episode nine palang. Grave. Wow. What action? Okay. 
And um, yung the drama that unfolded after, galing. Um, pace. What? Um, it was um, it was fast all through, fast and tense all throughout. Kasi kung kasi kung kasi kung tense yung scene, natural. Uh, considered fast na rin ang pace. Pero uh, it's fast but understandable kasi. Um, going for broke na sila shit dito eh. And, and he's assuming that the, the only chance for them to win this battle is to kill his brother who is manning uh, whose brain is manning the head um, the head yung, yung shepherd they, they call they call them shepherds yung parang malaki yung malaking yung malaking jogger lang to ganun they call they call They call them shepherds. His only chance there uh, was to was to was to take that shepherd out, who also happens to be his kuya. Yung kuya, yung putang tang kuya niya mismo ang nag uh, nagpapatakbo dun. So basically, well, through Lena's help, he was able to put put his own brother out of his misery. Kumaga, kumaga, euthanized. Minir si Killing na lang niyang magkapatid niya. Grabe. Wow. Okay. Fast. Again, fast but understandable. Kasi, they're in the middle of a battle. Then the ensuing drama. Yup. Understandable pa rin. Uh, Flow-wise. Uh, siguro first gear shift here is when um, uh, nagparamdam na si Lena. Tutulong siya rito Right? Kaya pala niya uh, Nagkaroon siya ng lakas sa loob na, na tulungan si Nasheen Because of Because of her friend Anel Kasi nag-deduce na niya Kung sino Yung Ipinagtabo yun noong araw ng 86 ni Anel It was Shin Kinonfirm niya kay Anel His name was Shin, right? Doon na tauhan Annette was able to hack into the mortar control system ng, ng Legion. So, kumbaga, ang pinabagsak nila doon, walang, walang, uh, walang live warhead, puro duds. Just giving Shin enough time to take his brother out. So, now, if I don't, now, if, if you don't call that a gear shift, I don't know what is. Galing, right? Second gear shift is of course when uh, when Shin finally takes his brother out. Talagang tinapos na niya yung paghihirap ng kapatid niya. Right? Wow! Brutal! Okay? Brutal yung one, brutal yung duelo nilang yun. I tell you guys, it's, uh, it's one of the most brutal battle scenes I've ever uh, I've ever seen. Alright? I felt like I was watching like I was watching the finale of a goddamn series. Parang gano'n yung dating eh. Gano'n yung dating. Right? It took me back to the... To the finale of Gundam Double O. Parang gano'n ang... Halos gano'n ang ending nun. Brutal. Okay? It had a brutal... It had, it had a brutal finale. So... Wow. <laughs> Final gear shift is of course when... Uh, uh, when Shin and company decided to go to that unknown... Uh, that part of the map where... That part of Lena's map, that part of Lena's map, which is marked as unknown, dun sila papunta. So, so natakot si Lena, right? If it weren't for that gear shift, we wouldn't have a final scene, right? Uh, it's a sort of ominous final scene. Akala, akala siguro kasi ni Lena, buong, buong akala niya na namatay ni Lima, nagpakamatay, right? So just to just to give Lena, uh, just to give the Republic justification para palitan si Lena. Kasi yun daw yun, yun daw talaga nangyayari. But you've all seen the post credit, yung final scene. No signal silang lima. Instead of destroyed. So there's a good chance na buhay pa silang lima. And uh, Lena still doesn't realize it. Right? These three gear shifts that I mentioned 
will play tingin ko ha tingin ko will play a, will play a role in the final two episodes right Whew. buti na ako mas stress medyo na stress ako dun grabe grabe 86 so it's another fucking great episode from this wow it's a great anime yet no one is no one's still talking about it No one is still talking about it. Talagang, uh, right now, one of the most underrated animes ever. So, 86 episode 9. Deserve! Two thumbs up! Alright, two thumbs up! Whew, excuse me. Kailangan ko minunod tubig. Really based on that while you're reviewing an anime. Kaya, well... Um... Siguro, um... I don't know what's going to happen in, in episode 10. Pero, um, the way I see it, then is going to... Then is going to look like a fool here. Siguro, siguro pag bumalik siya sa control room niya, at nakita niya na silang lima, no signal. Now, um, I don't know kung, um, um, the, uh, the final conversation these five were having, I think they were putting off Lene. I think they were distracting Lena to what they, to what they were, to what they truly want to do. Okay? Kasi, they were, they were mentioning landmarks in the capital city. Right? So, uh, okay, let's deep dive into it, right? I told you, 86 has that deep dive factor. Um, from the way uh, they were conversing, parang, well, si Shin talagang, uh, talagang tumira siya doon sa capital city ng Republic. Tumira siya, talagang tumira siya doon sa District 1 for a time. His measuring of landmarks is accurate. Pero, kasing accurate niya yung mga yung, yung mga pinabanggit na areas ng capital city na mga kasama niya. It's just as accurate. Kaya, na, napatakbo na lang si Lene to, to, probably where they're, to probably where they're going. Right? So, it's probably Uh, a way for those five to uh, to put Lena off. Kumbaga, dinistract lang nila si Lena as to uh, where they're truly going. So, ayun. Uh, probably the final scene confirms it. Kasi, kung talagang namatay sila, all their tongues would be, would be marked as destroyed. Hindi no signal. Alright? What might have happened there was when they were already in that uh, that unknown part of Lena's map, pinatay na nila mga cons nila. Yung, yung mga para raid. They were already turned off their para raids. Kumbaga, probably, okay? Probably, I'm just theorizing. Probably, uh, they've had enough of fighting. They want to they wanna live normal lives. Right? Well, let's see what happens in the final two episodes, okay? Uh, I can't wait to see the look on Lena's face once she finds out na uh, ganito yung tura ng screen niya, right? So again, 86 episode 9! Two thumbs up! First anniversary edition, two thumbs up mga ka-lifestyle! So, title of the next episode has been teaser. Why? Bakit ganun ang title? Bakit ganun ang title? Well, we'll just have to find out by uh, waiting for the next episode and watching it, right? Whoa! <laughs> and a cliffhanger ending! Grabe! And, uh, and it wasn't the final scene. Explain ko. Well, 
the dolls have learned to uh, uh, learn very valuable lessons in this episode. Okay, number one here, si Ricky. Uh, for this episode, he stopped being a douchebag. Right? Uh, especially nung, uh, nung nagsumamo ang kanyang mismo amo, si Patrick. Uh, Patrick told him to give the shears Lou gave uh, gave uh, Ricky para matulungan si Emily ko na isal pa si Kate. Simple lang yung rason ni Patrick. There is a debt to pay. That is a lesson in utang na loob. Right there. Right? So, nauna na sila. Inigay. And well, eventually, uh, Emily ko rescues Kate. Naisal pa niya. Final scene. So, um, Time has almost run out for Kate and Emilio. Well, the question now is, will they make it in time? Right? Four of the five um, third floor nobles have, uh, have already counted them out. Except one. The Lord Grandfather. Mukhang umaasa pa siya na uh, na papasa pa ang papasa pa ang pares nila. Alright? Wow. <laughs> uh, talk about cliffhanger moments. Overall, it's a fucking good episode. Wow. Alright? Base! Okay. Uh, the, the base was uh considerably fast pero not to the point as to um, as to ruin the storyline of the episode as to ruin the story of the episode nope you need that kind of a pace to uh, to what do you call this to, uh, to totally highlight the entire episode kasi uh, it's down to the home stretch name Alright? So, nauna na. Uh, nauna ng uh, makalabas si, si Lou at Luis ang pares nila. Then, the pair of uh, uh, John and Sean. Uh, John and Sean. Tapos si I think Rom, Rom and Shirley. Uh, Rom and Shirley. Then, Sigurado, ang um, susunod na dyan, si Ricky and, Ricky and Patrick. So, more likely, but um, if they ever make it in time, si Emily Cohn Kate. Alright? Maganda yung pacing ng episode. Uh, it was, it, uh, the pacing was so right, talagang totally, uh, I totally get the entire episode. Ganun yan eh. Okay? Low naman. Well, first gear shift is when um, uh, uh, what you call this? Was when John uh, sacrificed his own life just to save the two dolls, si Sean at si Ricky. Right? Well, uh, if you ask me, he wanted to shoot. He wanted to prove to himself how strong he is. Ayun. Sinalubo niya yung paparating na boulder sinalubong niya ng suntok na ganun basag basag yung boulder so, nagulat yung dalawa no. what did just happen? alright this gear ship proves uh, to me uh, and to every other every other anime fan that was able to watch this episode na hindi lahat ng hindi lahat ng shadow ay mata pobre Alright? Hindi lahat na siya ay mata pobre. Um, John is a good example. Okay? Now, of course, uh, siguro naawa siya kay Ricky. Nagpapaaram na nga si Ricky eh. Nagpapaaram na. Um, nagbibigyan na nga ng huling habilin eh. Uh, he even told Sean to, uh, to to please take care of Master Patrick. You know, you, you know huling habilin niya. <laughs> You know, huling hapili niya. So, 
Tom's Guru, uh, John felt John uh, felt uh, empathy for for uh, for Ricky, feeling na a fish should not lose his life this way. Tumulong siya. So sabay so sabay nilang sabay nilang uh, binuksan ni Ricky yung revolving door. Kasi double lock yun. Kailangan sabay nilang iangat yung dalawang lock na gano'n. So, um, in Ricky's place is now John. Ayun. He, he was able to destroy that boulder. So, wow. What a gear shift. Second gear shift. Nung um, what's you call this? When okay. When uh, Patrick told Ricky to give Uh, to give loose shears to Emilico. Kasi ang dala ni, ang dala lang ni Emilico, maliit lang na ganun. Alright? Eh, ang lalaki, ang lalaki ng mga saka na tatanggalin niya. Hindi kaya yun. Alright? So, wow. Okay? Patrick even begged Ricky to give it. So, bumaw pa siyang, bumaw pa siyang ganun. And he just told Ricky to give the shears to Emilico. There's a debt to pay. Siyempre, uh, sunod si Ricky. Uh, utos ng amo niya eh. So, pa. And, and they went on their way. Right? So, yeah, that was also a, uh, that was also a reality check for, uh, for both Ricky and Patrick. Now that's Patrick. And we all know, uh, Ricky was a douchebag because Patrick is also a douchebag. At that moment, nope. They threw that aside. Uh, they lowered their pride and helped out Emilico to help out Emilico save Kate. Gandang gearship. Final gearship is when, of course, uh, Emilico did not give up. She was able to rescue Kate. But, tanong, uh, well, <sighs> is there time left to uh, to raise? Or for for them to race to the exit. Malapit na mo, malapit na sila maubusan ng oras eh. Right? It, it is the whole stretch of the debut. Okay? So, these three gear shifts, right, will, uh, the way I see it, will play a role in the final four episodes of this anime. Tandaan nyo mga lifestyle. This is episode 9. The road to the finale of Shadow's House starts in this episode. Yeah, uh, probably every um, we're going to see uh, uh, we're going to see very crucial gear shifts from now on from this anime, starting from this episode nine. Tatong tatong important gear shift yung nakita ko rito, right? These three will be a factor. In the final four episodes, okay. Um, can you? Well, you. We can say that uh, these are life-changing gear shifts for all of them. Whether uh, for both, uh, for both dolls and shadows. Yeah, that's the way I see it. I don't know about you. <laughs> Plot-wise, malinis. Bakit? Kasi. Well, aside from having no, no hiccups or sleeper moments, right? Uh, the cliffhanger moments were uh, were, were well laid out. Okay, medyo medyo marami ang cliffhanger moments dito. Right, and that really kept me to the edge. Really kept me on edge. Right? Uh, then I tell you guys that, it, that this also was an intense episode because of those cliffhangers. Ah, uh-uh. talagang Malini sa plot, right? It um, it told the story of this episode uh, really nicely. Talagang ipinaintindi sa well, at least sa akin that uh, the debut is now on its own stretch. Kaya talagang lahat nagmamadali nagmamadali ng hanapin yung exit, right? But uh, everybody knows where the exit is, ne? So all they have to do now is just Just make a make a run for it. Okay? 
after they um uh, after they after they rescue their masters so kailangan diretso agad sa exit takbo so this um the plot really made me um really made me uh stick to the story of this episode talagang wow talagang uh, you might not expect cliffhanger moments from this kind of a plot pero abay eh, eh. wow buis buhay pala tong debut na to buis buhay pala to so another fucking great episode from this anime okay down to the home stretch and I can't wait for the final four episodes alright it's, it's now the road to the finale so Shadow's House episode 9 two thumbs up Ooh, two thumbs up okay nine episodes in Shadow's House has yet to uh, yet to get a lower rating from me right um, walang pugnak ang anime na to sa pagbibigay ng mga, mga intense episodes if, if not disturbing alright the mere appearance of these shadows are wow disturbing you see that uh, that one uh, third floor noble stuck or tao parang ano to ano to gecko ba't yun ang dila mo Pang pang reptile yung dila, ang haba bang yun. Aka, I, I, I thought I saw a cobra. I thought I saw the tongue of a cobra. Pa, parang dila ng cobra eh. Hmm, haba eh. Okay. This, is get, this anime is getting more disturbing. Courtesy of the shadows. Sus. And did you see the Lord Grandfather? He has no... F- yung korte ng mukha niya, talagang wala ka makikita. Right? He is headless. Pero, may nakapato na, na head ornament sa kanya. Tapos may ganun ganun pa para. May tinatakpang pang mukha yung ganun. Eh, wala, wala ka nga makikita ko ulo eh. Wala ka nga makikita ko ulo. May, na, may, may head ornament pa rito. Alright? Can it get more disturbing than that? Okay, can it get more disturbing than that? Grabe yung anime na to. You know, um, we're now down to the home stretch of of spring 2021. Yup, it feels like it now. Right? Um, the road to their respective finales have begun. Um, nearly every anime in this roster. I am going to miss some of them when they uh, after their finales have aired. May, ma- may mga mami miss ako rito. Right? And one of them probably will be Shadow's House. Okay? If it keeps its wings, if it keeps its um, wind streak going, it may be the first anime that um, it may be the first it may be the first anime that I have reviewed that never got a lower rating than two thumbs up. So, puro, puro two thumbs up ang eh, mga episode na sa akin. Right? So, but I hope they keep that win streak alive. Right? They will hold that distinction. So, again, Shadow's House, episode 9. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up the lifestyle. So, uh, hmm, Pagdala ito na sa episode has been teaser. Yeah. Medyo intriga. Ang, uh, ang, 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 ang title ng next episode. Pero, why trust it? If we can always wait for next week to watch the next episode. Ba? I just saw in this episode. 
Grabe. Basically, the entire episode was one battle scene. Okay? Then, um, well, Mikey reveals his soft side, uh, how he values uh, the gang as his family. Then, final scene, Kiyomasa accomplishes his goal. Ayun, nakabulagta na si Draken. Uh, natagpuan na lang siya ni, uh, ni Takinichi na naliligo sa sarili niyang dugo. Alright? Wow. Whew! Overall, probably one of the most tense episodes of this anime. Grabe. Okay? How do we start? Let's start with the base. <sighs> Sorry guys, but uh, I had to re-record uh, this part of the Tokyo Revenge review because I accidentally stopped the recording on the first one. So, uh, with that out of the way, let's start. So, base. Natural. Fast. Okay? Nakakalabo-labo eh, na eh. Kapatayan pa so talaga nga it's uh, it's fast pace is reasonable right it's not um, it's not yet fast enough to to completely bore you to death because there are some fast paced episodes that uh, simply run the viewer down Tokyo Revengers episode 9 is not one of them Right? So it was reasonably paced. Okay. Like I said, it's, uh, it's, well, uh, right now the most tense episode of this anime. Yeah, well, uh, tense ang atmosphere, fast pace. Flow naman. Well, um, there are only two gear shifts that I saw here. First is when, well, Mikey uh, confronted uh, confronted Pe not in a violent way but in a uh, in a in a brotherly in a brotherly way kasi uh, ibis na sa lubungan sa, uh, sa lubungan yung nasuntukan buntal si Pe he just uh, let Pe go at him talaga nagpa-punching bag siya kay Pe. Then all, then all of a sudden, uh, like a big brother, you know, he, he, he Pe sa kanya. Yeah, yeah. He just, uh, he just asked Pe if he was smiling right now. Uh, and, uh, the part where talaga natakuhan si Pe is when uh, Mikey said that Takimichi was the one that uh, was the one that uh, what's it called this uh, that that helped us become friends again. Sila ni Draken and naruto naruto ta uwan si Pe. So right there and then, Mikey was asking Pe to, to come back to Tokyo Manji. Right? Uh, despite uh, despite na nakakagulugulo na talaga. Then of course the final gear shift came when Takemichi sees uh, Yokimasa with a bloodied knife. Talaga, do palang nabarot ng tao sa mukha niya. So he, talaga, he went all out and looking for Draken. Boom! He saw Draken in a pool of blood. Right? Grabe. These two gear shifts, right? Itagan yung sabato, will play a role in future episodes. Naro na lang yung pinakauli. Iba, my, ah, my key. Bayan. Takinichi's mission was to, uh, was to keep Draken alive. Kasi nga, in the future, patay na siya. So, um, knowing Takinichi, 
he's going to he's going to hold himself very accountable for this he's gonna he's gonna feel like a loser again he is going to uh, well basically uh, uh, go play mode on himself again all right so those are two two really heavy gear shifts that will play a role in future episodes especially the last one Plot naman. Oh, for, a, for, a, for a very long riot scene, uh, I can call that a riot scene kasi labo-labo ni. Okay? Uh, they were all, uh, all this? they were all uh, sucking each other's lights out in a parking lot. Talaga, talaga gangor ang itsura <laughs> ng episode na to. So, malinis ang plot. Need I see more? Can I see more? Style. Again, another great episode with this anime. Right? So, Tokyo Revengers episode 9. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. You know, um, if Tokyo Revengers is getting the is getting the hype it deserves right now. Yeah. It truly really deserves it, right? I say uh, the main reason why I uh, why I took this on, why I included in in my spring 2021 roster is well, hindi mas ato naririnig. Although yung manga nito, okay, although yung manga nito had has a serious following in Japan, okay, uh, matindi ang fan base ng manga nito. So uh, and the I find it. I find it weird, right? Tapos din ako sa mga ano mga manga fans ito eh, kasi your favorite, their their all-time favorite manga is getting an anime adaptation, right? Uh, I don't know what manga fans, but I think they're uh, when it, when they when they find out that uh, their favorite manga is going to have an anime adaptation, parang ano eh, parang They're not in, they're not interested at all. Right? They're not interested at all in knowing na kung talagang uh, sinunod ng Leiden films yung yung manga ng Tokyo Revengers. So, well, uh, in one post on Instagram, there there well, uh, one of my uh, one of my fellow otaku uh, otaku enthusiasts posted uh, posted on his Instagram na uh, isang scene work yung scene na magsasagupuan ang Mebius at Oman uh, there is the manga version for it so he pitted that scene against that scene in the manga pareho lang eh right? halos pareho lang ang nagkaiba lang ang kaibahan lang uh, Kraken was in the foreground dun sa manga version. Sa anime version, nasa likod siya ni Mikey. Nasa likod na siya ni Mikey. Pero dito sa sa manga version na nakita ko yun, that exact sequence, that exact, that exact moment, he was in the foreground. Right? He was in the foreground. Yun ang, uh, yun ang, magay, spot the difference. That's, that's the only difference between those two, those two scenes. Yeah, that's the only difference. Um, all in all, talaga sinusunod ang Lighten Films ang ang uh, ang manga. Right? Uh, that's the that, that's the way I see it. So, uh, when I decided to take its anime adaptation on, I thought, hindi nga naririnig ito eh. Right? No one is hyping this, uh, no one is hyping this, this anime despite having a good synopsis. Yung wala akong first basis ko yung mga synopsis. Sabi ko, Wag na synopsis ito ah. Why haven't I heard this from, from, from anime fans? Bakit hindi ganun ka-excited ang anime community? So, I took it on. 
Then, nine episodes later, oh, someone is already hyping to the Tokyo Revengers anime. So, uh, it's now tread. Oh, this anime is now treading the path of uh, the right path towards uh, becoming uh, becoming a very doubted anime. Hindi hinay pito ng umpisa even before it started airing. Pero nine episodes later, it's now being hyped. Right? Tama lang. So, kumbaga, the hype is now justifying how good this anime is. Yun na tama. Right? Kaysa namang na, mayari, mayari. For example, if you're an anime, and you got hyped even before your even before you started airing. Then um, anime fans are starting to uh, they're starting to disapprove uh, of you. So, they're starting to lose interest, you lose viewers, you lose ratings, of course. You lose ratings. Then uh, eventually no one is no one is interested anymore in you as an anime. Right? You can now be dubbed as overrated. I see. Um, you've already received the hype pre-airing. So, pagdating, pero, hindi mo na justify yun while, while you were airing. Okay. That, that already classifies if you're an anime. That already classifies you as overrated. Okay? You're not overrated. Now, ang underrated naman, right? Uh, best scenario for you to become an underrated anime is hindi ka na hype uh, before the airing, during your airing, and right after you air. Right? can be classified now as underrated. Okay? Pero, uh, the right, uh, I'm not saying, well, I'm not totally saying it's the right path to becoming a great anime. For me, this is the sensible path. Okay? I just rephrased myself. If you didn't get the hype before you started airing, but while you were airing, dun mo natatanggap ngayon ang hype, or best ever okay. the most satisfying scenario is during the, your final three episodes dun mo na receive ang hype na deserve mo that's when that that's when that's when you receive the hype you deserve during the during your, during your final three episodes congratulations you are the real deal you're the real deal as in the case of um, Akodama Drive, okay? Kung kailang finale na, okay? When, uh, when it's finale aired, that's when the hype started. That's when the hype started. So, people are now realizing what they just missed out. So, the fear of missing out now sets in. Mm. So, so many people are now... Uh, one, you know, they want to see. They want to see what Akuta and Five is all about. Oi, take a final. This one, you're gonna be the champion. Take a final. This one, you're gonna be the champion. Scenario, Jan. Right now, uh, if you were able to uh, uh, to justify the pre-airing hype from from pilot to finale, yep, you are also the real deal. Such is the case of Jujutsu Kaisen. Ah, okay. Na justify niya from start to finish yung hype na natanggap niya before, uh, before it started airing. Yep, Jujutsu Kaisen is the real deal. And if Tokyo Revengers maintains this, uh, maintains this hype train up to, up to the finale, then we, uh, then we can say it is the real deal. Right? Tandaan nyo, hindi na-hype ang anime adaptation nito. 
when it started airing. People were too busy with um, uh, ano ba yung, of course, the Shaman King reboot, right? But the Shaman King reboot is another uh, is another example of the real deal. Because I've been I'm also reviewing Shaman the Shaman King reboot, and it's yet to it's yet to get a lower rating from me, a rating lower than two thumbs up, right? Tokyo Avengers, mark my words. It's on its way of becoming uh, solidifying itself as the real deal for spring 2020 and probably summer. Say it's a 24 episode run, so it will cover two anime seasons, right? So again, Tokyo Revengers episode nine. Two thumbs up. I revamp two thumbs up. So in typical Revengers fashion, no teasers. <laughs> wow, right? Kaya exciting ang anime na to eh. Hindi siya talaga na teaser ng episode. So you really have to watch an episode from start to finish. Then judge for yourself if you if you still want to watch this anime. Ganun lang naman yun eh. It's the way it should be. Impressive, right? This is one of the um, sort of um, uh, the road to the finale taking a detour, but this time, uh, si, si Sherlock Holmes naman ang bita. But it's got a case concerns uh, that concerns uh, Watson's fiance, right? He eventually solves uh, solves this case. But uh, talaga mong, talaga mong, talaga mong walang, uh, walang, walang so in the final scene, uh, umami na yung si Mary, pangalan ng fiance ni, ni, ni Watson, that she is being blackmailed. Clear up si Watson. Who would do this to you? Ang sagot ni ang sagot ni Sherlock. There's only one man in London who can uh, who can stoop this low. The King of Blackmailers, Charles Augustus Milverton. Well, congratulations, Milverton. Hindi na hindi lang ang mga Moriarty ang kalaban mo ngayon. Pati na rin si Sherlock Holmes. Alright? Pati na rin si Sherlock Holmes. Kalaban mo na rin. So, overall, it's a really good episode. Alright? I'm impressed. Okay? Let's talk about the plot. Uh, let's talk about the pace first. Okay? The pace was so properly done that it will eventually lead you to a uh, to this expose by uh, by Sherlock Holmes, Kaling. All the while, I was wondering, bakit bakit the fear away ang road to the finale? Di ba dapat ako focus? Di ba dapat ako focus dalo sa mga Moriarty's ngayon? Na they just declared war on Milverton, right? So okay, so the base made me understand why. Why it veered away a bit? So, the focus mo naki Sherlock. Kaya pala. Looks like well, the pace made me understand that oh, the Moriarty's uh, Milverton did not just gain an enemy in the Moriarty's. Because of this episode, even Sherlock Holmes is now onto him. <laughs> even Sherlock Holmes na. Rabe. Yeah. Um, it was properly paced. Okay, it was properly paced because but, uh, this anime made us understand as to why. Bakit? Bakit nila ginan? So, flow naman. Okay. Well, eventually. Um, and then, first gear shift. Okay. Um, 
nakalata ni Sherlock ang talagang motive ni Mary kung bakit niya gusto sumama kay Watson at makilala si Sherlock Holmes. Meron siyang, meron siyang case na iyong offer kay Sherlock. Ayun na. Uh, her father's disappearance and uh, ano ang kinalaman ng taong nakapaligid sa tatay niya dito sa pagkawala niya. Hmm. Then, second gear ship. It now leads to us. It now leads to the, sec, to, to the second gear ship. Well, someone was murdered. Yung anak ni Major Solto na kaibigan ng tatay niya. Tatay ni Mary. Right? Yun pala, nag-away-away pala ang apan na tao including her father over uh, what they call the treasure of Agra. Dami! Alahas! Right? Which they did not acquire through, uh, through well, legal means. Right? Mga nakita lang nila, natanda nila yung treasure, kinuha nila for themselves. So, bottom line, nag-away-away sila as, as to the hatian. Okay? They, uh, They were more than willing to kill each other for a, for a proper split in the treasure. First victim, of course. And then, first victim, Tate ni Mary. Namatay. Namatay, pa, namatay pala tatay niya. Napatay ni, ni Major Soto. Right? And now, the remaining two are after Mary. So, yun nga. Ginawa ng paraan nila, nila, nila Holmes at Watson. So, kung nangyari, kung nangyari, mga river pirates sila. So, uh, this, this guy named Shield, Shield, Shield ba yun? He voluntarily gave up his claim to the treasure by throwing the entire treasure onto the Thames. Wonderful. Right? Which leads us now to the final gear ship nang hinayang si Mary. So, uh, dinisclose, well, nag-deduce na ni Sherlock. Sinabi niya kay Mary, uh, you're also interested in the treasure. Tama ba ako? Hinayang niya. Ayun, lumabas ang totoo. She is being blackmailed. She is being blackmailed into her share of the treasure kasi anak siya anak sa ni anak sa isang kahati so she has every right to, to get that treasure pero she's being blackmailed from she's being blackmailed from the shadows ayun na nagdidus ka agad ni nagdidus na naman ni Sherlock hmm. si Milberto sigurado may gawa nito grabe these three gear ships will probably play a role in uh, in the final three episodes of season two. Lalo na na ang final gear shift. Kasi alam na ni Sherlock eh. Nabisto. Nabisto niya talaga ng maigi. Alright? Na si Milverton pala ang nagba-blackmail sa, sa fiancé ni Watson. So, oh! Well, Ikasiguro ni Sherlock. Milverton, what? Well, You just made an enemy out of me. Bahala ka sa buhay mo. <laughs> so, he'll be, he'll be, he'll probably be coming after Milverton too. So, Milverton, congratulations. It is, you now, you're now fighting a war on two fronts. The Moriarty's and Sherlock Holmes. Kaya, uh, the way I see it, this is going to be a slam bank finale. Season 2. Now, block. What did I say? Malinis, right? I did not expect this uh, this deduction from Sherlock. Na kagad, madi di just na niya kung sino ano ba black mail sa sa fiance ng kaibigan niya. Dinis ko, irifin niya kagad si Milverton dito. Ano? Okay. Ngayon, alam ko na kung bakit nag-veer away na pumukos muna kay Sherlock ang road to the finale. Oh my God! Looks like Milbert... No, 
it's obvious. Milverton has gained another another strong enemy. It's not just the Moriart. It's not just the Moriartis anymore. But now you can now throw Sherlock Holmes into that. Alright. Uh, in typical Moriarty the Patriot fashion. Grabe. Ang linis ng plot. Right? Hindi, hindi, hindi ako lang orient doon. Hindi ako lang orient sa revelation ni, ni Sherlock yun. Alright? Talagang, no, to Sherlock Holmes, no clue is invaluable. No clue, uh, every clue is valuable. Every clue has a deep dive factor. Yun. Oh, another great episode from this anime. Right, season two. Patapos na. We're now down to uh, we're now down to the final three episodes. So, Moriarty the Patriot second season episode ten. Two thumbs up. All right, two thumbs up. This isn't the first time I've given this anime the two thumbs up. We're in. None of the Moriarty's are uh, are involved. Nah, yeah, what's it? probably the end time I've given the two thumbs up. Now Sherlock, that Sherlock Holmes is involved, right? Wow, grabe. Hindi ko mapicture ngayon sa isip ko on how the finale is going to go down, All right? Milverton now has. Uh, now has two enemies in front of him. The Moriarty's. Well, we cannot collectively call them the Lord of Crime. And of course, Sherlock Holmes now. Alright? Both the Law and uh, the Lord of Crime are now after him. Talagang, well, uh, from the side of the Moriarty's, he needs to die. From the side of Sherlock Holmes, he needs to rot in a jail cell. Whose um, whose resolve will will give way, right? Magiging tanong dito sa final three episodes. So uh, the winner between the Moriarty's and Milverton will face up against Sherlock Holmes. No, throw that away. Maliang maliang assumption ko. It is now a three-way war between Milverton, the Moriarty's, and Sherlock Holmes. This is going to be one interesting finale. These final three episodes will will be the most will be the most interesting ones. Okay, who's gonna give? Who's going to give? So again, Boyard the Patriot second season episode ten. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up, mga kalais. So, next episode has been teasered. Okay. Bakit ganito ang title nito? Right? Bakit ganito title nito? Anyway, we'll just have to wait for next week and watch that one. Para ma-deep dive naman natin. Para ma-deep dive naman natin uli ang anime na to. Uh, 